welcome to Penrith Baptist Church. If you've been joining us for the month of January, we are doing a January pilgrimage called Faith and Friendship. And we're looking at the life of Abraham. We hope you'll be encouraged and blessed by today's message from Scott, speaking about a life of covenant with God. After the message today, make sure you stay right to the end and watch for any announcements that will come up. Have a look at what's happening in Penrith Baptist Church and how you can be connected and involved as well. Thanks everyone, enjoy. Hello and welcome to week two in our series, Faith and Friendship. Uh, looking at the life of Abraham and last week, Mark kicked us off uh, looking at the calling of Abraham. And today we're going to look at a life of covenant and looking at the covenant that God made uh, with Abraham. And uh, there's, there's quite a few different covenants that we read about in the Bible. And some of the ones that I want to just mention really quickly right now, uh, there is the Noah or Noahic covenant. There is the Abrahamic covenant, which is what we're going to be looking at today. There's the Mosaic covenant. It's the covenant that God made with Moses where we read about the Ten Commandments. There's the Davidic covenant, a covenant that God makes with David. And then there's the, the best covenant of all, uh, that is the new covenant, the covenant that we have now through what Christ has done for us. But as we look at God's covenant with Abraham, there's, there's uh, in Genesis, we want to just touch on, I think, probably three locations where we get a, a pretty good picture of what this covenant was. Starting with verse 12, I'm going to read the first three verses and a couple of other passages as well in Genesis. We read these words. The Lord had said to Abram, leave your native country, your relatives and your father's family and go to the land that I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you and make you famous and you will be a blessing to others. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who treat you with contempt. All the families on earth will be blessed through you. Then Genesis 15 verse 4 to 6 says this, Then the Lord said to him, No, your servant will not be your heir, for you will have a son of your own who will be your heir. Then the Lord took Abram outside and said to him, Look up into the sky and count the stars if you can. That's how many descendants you will have. And Abram believed the Lord, and the Lord counted him as righteous because of his faith. And finally, Genesis 17, verse 6 to 8. God says this, I will make you extremely fruitful. Your descendants will become many nations, and kings will be among them. I will confirm my covenant with you and your descendants after you from generation to generation. This is the everlasting covenant. I will always be your God and the God of your descendants after you. I love those words, that promise. I will always be your God, always, and the God of your descendants after you. And I will give the entire land of Canaan where you now live as a foreigner, to you and to your descendants. It will be their possession forever and I will be their God. There's so much in those three passages that we're going to talk about, some of the things we're going to talk about and some of those things we're going to get some explanation around looking at a couple of passages or in the New Testament. And we're just going to have a look at those right now, starting in Romans chapter 4. Where even when there was no reason for hope, Abraham kept hoping, believing that he would become the father of many nations. For God had said to him, that's how many descendants you will have. And Abraham's faith did not weaken, even though at about a hundred years of age, he figured his body was as good as dead. And so was Sarah's womb. Abraham never wavered in believing God's promise. In fact, 
his faith grew stronger and in this he brought glory to God. He was fully convinced that God is able to do whatever he promises. And because of Abraham's faith, God counted him as righteous. I'm going to read two more um, passages here. Uh, Both of these are going to be in Ephesians chapter 3, starting with verse 6. In the same way, Abraham believed God and God counted him as righteous because of his faith. The real children of Abraham then are those who put their faith in God. What's more, the scriptures look forward to this time when God would make the Gentiles right in his sight because of their faith. God proclaimed this good news to Abraham long ago when he said, all nations will be blessed through you. So all who put their faith in Christ share the same blessing Abraham received because of his faith. So all who put their faith in Christ share the same blessing Abraham received because of his faith. And then lastly, Galatians 3, down to verse 26. For you are all children of God through faith in Christ Jesus. And all who have been united with Christ in baptism have put on Christ like putting on new clothes. There is no longer Jew or Gentile, slave or free, male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. And now that you belong to Christ, you are the true children of Abraham. You are his heirs and God's promise to Abraham belongs to you. It's amazing to think that we share the same blessing that Abraham received himself, that you and I are a part of that lineage. When Abraham even looked up into the stars and and tried to start counting them, he might have seen a representation of you and me in amongst all those stars because the fact that we are in that spiritual lineage of Abraham means that we are his heirs, that we have spiritual heirs, that we have come by faith through Christ into the same covenant, into the same promises that Abraham received also belong to us through Christ. It's an incredible, amazing thought when you think about it. By faith we, in Christ, we've inherited what Abraham received because of his faith. So here's the question I want us to think about today because there's one word that's been popping up a lot through those verses that I read. And it's, and it's a word that I guess can be represented in a few different words, but essentially the word we're going to look at a bit today is faith. When Abraham believed in the Lord, when he trusted in God, his faith was in God. That against hope, he still, he hoped against all hope that his faith was in God. So I want to talk about that word faith today in the context of this covenant that we are a part of, that we're wrapped up in, whether we want it to be or not, and we do want to be, that we are already included in in this covenant that God makes with Abraham, and it's by faith. So I want us to have a bit of a chat today about faith. How is your faith? Are you full of faith? Are you strong in your faith? Or is your faith struggling a bit at the moment? Do you find it hard to trust God in the middle of some of the situations and the circumstances that you're facing right now? Are you wavering in believing God's promises? Or do you keep hoping in God when you cannot see any reason for hope? What we've just read in these verses is that we like Abraham can have great faith because God is a covenant keeper he is true to his word he is true to all of his word and even when there looks like there is no reason to hope as it's talking about Abraham when Abraham looked at himself and and looked at his wife and said there is no way that we're going to be able to have a child against all hope in the physical sense he's still had hope because he trusted in God's word. He didn't waver. In fact, 
His faith even got stronger, the Bible says, as we just read before. So we can, like Abraham, have hope against hope. When, when there is no hope, when we feel like there's no hope, when we feel like there's nothing more that we can do, when we don't even know if we can generate even any more faith anymore, that we can still have something inside of us that will, I guess, stubbornly say, I am going to trust God's word. I am going to stand on God's word. In uh, 2012, our family moved to Phoenix, Arizona to plant a church. And uh, it wasn't just as easy as, hey, we're going to go to America. Let's pack up our things and jump on a plane and go. Uh, there was a lot of stuff that we had to do between um, that time when we knew we were going to when we actually went. We had to sell our house. We had to sell my car and, and sell Sam's car. Had to sell a whole bunch of furniture, a whole lot of things. And we ended up with whatever we could fit in our suitcases. Uh, we left with 13 suitcases. We landed with 12. Um, the 13th eventually did catch up to us. But even before that, we had to get our visa sorted. We couldn't just jump on a plane and go over on a tourist visa. We had to get a visa that said that we're allowed to work there. So we started that process of applying for a visa. And we filled out all this paperwork, uh, collated all this different information that was being requested, and we sent it off to uh, the immigration lawyer who was helping us fill this out. And they submitted it on our behalf and then and it came back uh, saying that we need to give more information, that we need to get more documentation. So away we went and we tried to find out these other things that they were asking, sent it all back, and then we waited and then we waited. And we the whole process was a lot of waiting. And we hadn't heard anything for a good couple of months. And uh, so we were just trying to figure out uh, what do we do? Who do we call? How do we work out what to do? And so we just started to pray, God, we need to find out soon what's happening because our, our timeline of when we thought we were going to go was starting to look like it was going to have to change. And so we're planning things and all that sort of stuff. We needed to try and find out. And so we prayed, God, we need an answer. We need you to show us the answer. We need that answer to come back. And we're expecting it to come back approved, but the opposite happened. We actually did get the answer, but it came back denied. Not the, not the um, result that we were looking for. And I went into the church and I uh, spoke to the pastor, uh, Jack, and talked to uh, one of the other guys there, a guy called Rob, and we prayed. And as we prayed, we felt to pray boldly. We felt to pray the prayer that hopes against all hope. And so the verse that we prayed from was in Revelation chapter 3, verse 8. And you may be familiar with this verse. It says, I know all the things you do, and I have opened a door for you that no one can close. You have little strength, yet you obeyed my word and did not deny me. And so we prayed and believed because we felt like God had opened the door. We felt like it was God that was prompting us to make this move, to go and start this church in Arizona. So when the answer came back denied, we had to navigate that by faith and say, no, we believe, we discerned, we prayed that we were supposed to go and do this. So we prayed and these words that we were praying through, God, you have opened this door. So somehow this door has got to be opened for us to go, the, the literal door to go into the country. Well, that door needs to be opened because you've opened the door for us to go and start this church. Later that day, as we prayed, having received the denied, your application has been denied message, having prayed that morning that God would open that door that, that no one can shut. A pastor friend from Scotland, the other side of the world, randomly sent a text to us 
And I say randomly because he had no idea what was going on. He didn't know about the visa. He didn't know about the visa application. He certainly didn't know about the visa application being denied. And he didn't know about us praying from Revelation 3 verse 8. But the very verse that he texted through that day was exactly that from Revelation 3 verse 8. I know all the things you do and I have opened a door for you that no one can close. So we had even more reason to believe. We had even more substance to our faith because God had reminded us again of his word and of his promise. And so against the, the answers of rejection and, and the no's, and the, we, we stood on that word to say, God, you have opened the door that no one can shut. And so we ended up going down another path, actually, with another kind of visa, which, long story, but actually worked out to be a far better visa for us and for our family. I tell that story because in our faith life, it doesn't always happen immediately. Our faith walk takes some time. Have you ever noticed that faith is one of those things that is easy to talk about until you need to walk it out? I'll say that again. Have you ever noticed that, that faith is, is easy to talk about until you need to actually walk it out? Because we find ourselves in situations and times when, when we're faced with a situation, we're faced with a circumstance, we're faced with a doctor's report, we're, we're faced with financial difficulty, we're, we're faced with unemployment, we, we can be faced with all these things that, that rock us and that can unsettle us. And we don't know in, in, in the moment sometimes how to navigate that. And so we want to have faith and we want to stir up faith. But the last thing we want to do sometimes is actually go through that mode of, of trying to stir up faith because it seems like it's too hard. It seems like it's not going to happen. Our situation feels more real than what God's word is saying sometimes to us. So we have this battle. We have this thing going on between our faith and our fear and we're trying to battle our fear and we're trying to work through all the things that try and control our thoughts and, and all those negative things that happen sometimes when we really need to be standing on the word of God and hoping against hope, not letting our faith waver. Even the opposite, what happened with Abraham, that it didn't waver. In fact, it even grew stronger. Because he stood on the word of God. He remembered the word of God. He meditated on the word of God. He knew the word of God. And that's what we need to do too in our faith. That we stand on the word of God. And it does take time. Sometimes those faith seasons are longer than an hour. Sometimes they're days and weeks. Sometimes they're months and years. And sometimes even their decades. But I want to encourage us today to not waver in our faith. We are the heirs of this promise that God gave to Abraham. We are heirs to that. We are included in that. And he is our God. God Almighty, he is our God. And we can stand firm and resolute on his word because his word was true to Abraham and his word is true to us. That's what a life of covenant is about. I don't know if you noticed when we read those that, that covenant out before, there's actually not a lot for us to do. So much of that covenant that we read about in the Abrahamic covenant is actually all about God. It's all about what he has done, all about what he is doing and what he will do for us and on our behalf so that we can be his sons and his daughters. And he has given us his word that will not fall short. He has given us his word that will not fail. So what are we learning today about God's covenant with Abraham? That God's promises to Abraham are to us also through Christ. 
that God's word is true. That we, that we may have to wrestle in prayer sometimes, but we have the capacity and we have the example that we can hope against all hope because our God is able. So I encourage you, stand firm. Stand firm in your faith in God and in his word. Don't give up and don't give in because God's will and God's word prevails always prevails. Amen. Let me pray. Lord God, we thank you for your message to us. We thank you for your word. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for your word that is, uh, Lord, unshakable. And Lord, that you are always true to your word. And just as you spoke those words, that covenant to to Abraham, those thousands of years ago, 4,000 years ago, Lord, that we are even included Lord, in that, in that promise. And so, Lord, I thank you that it, that it is true for us. And Lord, that if we find ourselves in situations where our faith is being tested, where our faith is being shaken, Lord, I pray that your word today would encourage us, would inspire us, that we can have great faith because your word and because of who you are. We thank you for it, Lord, and we just commit this word. Pray that you would cause it to bear much fruit in our lives today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a great week and God bless you. Bye-bye.